As we enter day two of our Puerto Rican journey, we leave behind the city and old San Juan and those great castles to take a walk on the wild side of things. Whew. Already I'm a bit tired. We've been walking for about a minute, but this trail, which was partially destroyed by Hurricane Maria, is, I can already tell, going to be a bit of a tough one. What's the name of the national forest we're in? El Yunque. El Yunque. It's the El Yunque Trail. So we're going to go all the way up to the top, and hopefully see the entire island. So join us as we explore the natural side of Puerto Rico. El Yunque holds the distinction of being the only rainforest operated by the National Park Services in the U.S. I imagine it makes it an entirely different sort of challenge to maintain. So you can see the trails, very wet, it's very humid, it's extremely lush. Now, perhaps due to the fact that it can randomly rain here, there are a lot of these little structures around. Already past three. Now right at the very beginning of it, out there, you can see the Atlantic Ocean. Nice little overlook. Walking in the rainforest, I'm reminded of an episode of Archer where he has to walk through a jungle. And he says, everything in here either wants to eat me or give me malaria. Now I haven't been bitten by anything yet, but once the mosquitoes get a taste, they can't stay away typically, so probably gonna be a little bit itchy tomorrow. This split, we are about halfway, 1.3 miles to go. Nice little stop off point. Morale's a little low, I would say. I'm a little sweaty, it's pretty humid. But only way past is through. So, see all the way out to the ocean. See the shining sea. See the shining sea, that's right. Uh, still more to go. We're we'll out on some change later. We summited. I'm king of the world. Wow, you can basically see the whole island. I believe that's San Juan. That hike is definitely not for the faint hearted. But the view is pretty nice. Definitely, I wish I brought more water though. But that was El Yunque. Now, unfortunately, anytime you go up a mountain, you have to go back down the mountain. And usually, if you're like me, you've sort of run out of interest in hiking up and down mountains at this point. So, fortunately, there's no other way to go. There's a road, but our car is over here. So that means, shortly, we're gonna have to go back on this trail. But still, at least as of right now, this is a pretty worthwhile hike. I think we can all agree, I mean, looking at the views from the top, that El Yonke is spectacular. So, we may spend a bit more time up here looking around, but likely the next part of this video will be me sitting in a car with air conditioning on. 
So that's that from El Yonke. We start today, my last day in San Juan, Puerto Rico, in front of the Carlos Albizu University. No one appears to be going in or out, but of course it's a Sunday, so that makes some sort of sense, doesn't it? Also, as of yesterday, it snowed eight inches, or some, something crazy like that. Or excuse me, 28 inches in Boston, and here, it's still 85 degrees, so go figure. Should be a good day. Finally see some of the last forts and uh, wrap this sucker up. So one downside potential to San Juan is there's one guy who's putting bags in a car up there, holding up all these people, just taking a sweet time. It's pretty amazing. Our first stop of the day is Castillo San Cristobal, which is the other major fort in San Juan. As with El Muro, overlooks the ocean. And as like El Muro, I'm pretty sure it's part of the National Park Service. So if you have one of the passes to get in national parks, you can use it to get in here. And unlike the Dutch or the British, we are now inside the walls of San Cristobal. The center courtyard. One thing I'm noticing right away is this has more of a palatial look to it than did El Muro, which looked far more like a fort, proper fort. Which makes sense when you consider that El Muro was supposed to defend the mouth of the bay, which is the most important thing to control when you're talking about a trading colony. In the days of yore, it was built in 1797, you would have had troops walking to and fro, maybe drilling in here. It would typically be Spanish professional soldiers, but mixed in were some local Puerto Ricans. Of course, no Spanish possession would be complete without a chapel. Place for soldiers who are almost certainly exclusively of the Catholic faith to pray. So this would be part of the barracks complex where the men would live. Big open windows for them to enjoy the weather, enjoy the sunlight. Yeah. Across the way, way over there, you can still see El Muro in the distance. The lonely sentinel guarding the bay would be attackers. So this part was built during World War II. And you can see there's definitely a change in philosophy as far as what defenses should look like. You can see it replicated over there as well. So this was the main battery 
firing level, all these openings that have cannons rolled right up to them. You'd probably have spotters standing on these platforms. And of course some cannonballs. Looking in through there is the quarters we saw before. So presumably the men if need be could have jumped right out of their living quarters and gotten ready to join the fight. Now interestingly, it appears that this castle was built with sort of a keep design because firing guns from up here would presumably have you firing them over top of a part of the fort as opposed to just firing out to where the enemy would be. So presumably you'd be able to lob ordnance over the top of your own fortifications but still have the ability if need be if those defenses were breached to fire down into them. And then obviously this here would be the central keep so they were able to scale the walls fall back again. That multi-tiered design was pretty much state-of-the-art from like the, I'm trying to think, 1100s, 1200s, popularized in France, brought to England by the Normans, and was really the dominant uh, structure for fortifications until the advent of heavy guns, artillery, and airplanes. Once again, we're in a World War II era part of the structure. Now, Puerto Rico was never actually attacked during World War II, but fearing some sort of invasion, the fort was rehabbed. They added these concrete structures from which you could fire guns and approaching ships. These tunnels were supposed to allow soldiers to move throughout the fort without risk of being attacked. They could also be used as a way to trap invaders who had already gotten into the fort by detonating mines, which would cause the tunnels to collapse. Now, unfortunately, it seems that because of COVID or whatever, we're not going to be able to go into the tunnel complex, which is devastating because I want to see that. And also, my head would stop burning in the heat if we were down there, so it's a big loss. If you want to sneak into the fort, all you have to do is climb a wall of one of these houses, and just run up this little knoll, go through that door, you'll be in. Another interesting thing I've noticed, especially driving into Old San Juan, is that on Sunday a lot of cruise ships come here to dock. From the street level, you get a sense of uh, just how epic the proportions of the fortress are. You'd have to be scaling a lot of walls before you put any real pressure on them. Across the street from me is the beautiful capital of Puerto Rico. And outside of that appears to be some sort of protest based on the number of tents. Don't exactly know what that's about, but the building itself it is absolutely gorgeous. Is that marble we're just saying? What's that made out of? It looks like marble to me. Yeah. Nice dome. It actually in some ways reminds me of Ohio State Capitol. Except much prettier, as my mom says. Hey, it has a dome. It has a dome. We walk down the beach first thing. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Under protest, we are going down to the beach. Either of us have swimsuits, 
It's sandy. We're gonna get in our shoes and make walking around unpleasant for the rest of the day. But in spite of that, we're at the beach. One interesting feature of this beach is there's sort of a rocky outcrop there. It protects us from the worst of the waves. Do you want to walk around the capital? Yeah, let's do that. protesting about something either with the virus or corrupt legislators not 100 clear exactly what but something like that with the light shining onto the marble it looks even more brilliant That's a proper state capital, well, not state capital, but you know what I mean. Proper capital building. There's some statues on the other side of the street that look a little too lifelike. I thought there were people. They're not. Got the nice Lincoln quote at the top. Government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. It remains to be seen if that's true or not. So over there, across this wall, is La Fortaleza, which is the longest occupied, or continuously occupied, seat of government in North America, the New World, so. It's once part of a fortress complex, now it's the home of the governor. as I stand here, getting sprayed by a fountain, which is itself a testament to Puerto Rico's history. I wanted to take a moment to reflect on what has been a transformative vacation. Truly, this is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. The weather's perfect, sublime. The food's excellent. The prices aren't out of control. And I didn't need my passport to actually come here, which is very nice for us Americans. So, all in all, Puerto Rico is, especially if you're an American, a must visit. But even more than that, it seems like a lovely place to live. Somewhere I'd aspire to one day retire to. So, signing off from Puerto Rico. This has been another Sam trip video, or whatever I'm gonna call this series.